Okay. So this is a problem uh, from the past exams uh, from 2013. Uh, first midterm and the first problem in that midterm. Right. So in this problem, we have a ball, a semi-spherical ball, and in this, there are two little uh, spheres of charge, so they both have mass m, and they have both have charge q, and we have gravity, we're not inducting gravity here, so this is uh, something that yeah, just holds these, and uh, they are equally, you know, equally charged, so they repel each other, and they come to equilibrium at some point, so the radius of this ball is capital R, the distance between the charges is uh, six-fifths of R. And, uh, and they're asking about a number of things here. Uh, they're asking for the free body diagrams, and then uh, they're asking to calculate uh, the charge in terms of the other constants and the potential energy. Okay. So let's start with the free body diagrams. Uh, but before uh, jumping into the free body diagram business, I want you to notice that this is very, very similar to another problem that we already looked at. Right. So this is very similar to the situation where you have a ceiling and there are two charges hang by ropes, okay, uh, repelling each other this way. Now, why is this similar? Now, what forces are acting on, on these charges? Now, first of all, there is the gravity, right? They have a mass, so there's downward gravity. And there is the uh, electrostatic force that's repelling each other, that's horizontal, uh, because they rise to the same level, it's going to be completely horizontal. And they are in contact with this spherical ball, so there's going to be a normal force perpendicular to the surface of this container. Right, so three forces, gravity, electrostatic force, and normal force. In here, when you have two charges that are repelling each other and hung from the ceiling by uh, ropes of same length, which was one of the suggested problems, you see something very similar. Uh, how so? Well, there's gravity, there's electrostatic force. Again, this is going to be horizontal, just like over here, because they rise actually the same level, and there's going to be tension, yeah, canceling these two forces. In this case, it's normal force that's canceling the electrostatic force and the gravity. Here is tension that's canceling the gravity and electrostatic force. It's pretty much the same problem, but uh, one of the forces has changed its nature. Right? It's an external force, so uh, the physics doesn't change too much, but it's just, uh, just something different. Instead of a tension, in this case, it's a normal force. Okay, so what does this look like? So first of all, we are going to call this angle theta. There is some something in the in some scribbling, but I'm not sure if this is given as part of the problem or uh, we need to calculate this explicitly. I will calculate it explicitly, it doesn't really matter. So for the left, uh, left mass, we are going to have Fg, the gravity, we are going to have the electric force, and we are going to have the normal force. Okay? And this angle is also going to be theta, right? the same as that angle. So if you throw it this way, normal is this way, this angle is the same as that one. Now for the right mass, we are going to have the mirror symmetric of this. We have gravity, G, we have electric force, electric, and we have the normal force. And it's not very important, but in both cases, the normal force is canceling the vector sum of these two, so you might want to throw something uh, that makes sense, that, uh, that's reasonably accurate. Now what can we say about this angle theta? Well, if you look at this triangle, so this side is R, this side, so let's draw this triangle here. This is R, this is half of that, this side of that triangle is half of that, so it's three-fifths R. Now since this is a right triangle, this must be four-fifths R. Right, this is just three, four, five triangle, five-fifths being just one. Right, so then uh, we can say something about this angle theta. You could just say it's 37 degrees, but uh, to be more accurate, we can say that tangent theta uh, is three quarters. Yeah. So it's slightly different from uh, 37, but 37 I think is also uh, quite acceptable in this case. Okay. Uh, then they're asking for the charge in terms of the other quantities, R, uh, G, and so on and so forth. So given this configuration, how would you calculate the charge? Now, to do this, uh, we need to relate the electric force to gravitational force. And this free body diagram is very helpful uh, because let's just 
extend this over here. So this normal force, because in uh, equilibrium, it's just canceling these two, uh, it's going to be the vector sum of these two. The opposite of the normal force is going to be the vector sum of these two. So I can actually carry out the electric force this way. So I can have a triangle here with the angle theta. And the tangent theta that I just wrote should also be the magnitude of the electric force divided by the magnitude of the gravitational force. Mm? And yes, this is a little bit complicated, but uh, you can write it. So the magnitude of the electric force is just the Coulomb force between them. It's one over four pi epsilon naught Q square divided by the distance over here, six fifths R squared. Square, and for gravity, uh, it's trivial, it's just mg. <coughs> okay. uh, so you need to take this ratio, and uh, the, you can actually solve this equation for uh, q, right? So 3 fourths is this divided by mg, and you'll just need to pull uh, q out. I'm not going to do this, but uh, I think it's done correctly in the, in the solution provided. And finally, they are asking for the uh, electrostatic potential energy of these two charges. This is not something we have seen yet, but uh, we might as well state this. So for two charges, the electrostatic potential energy is given by a simple formula. It's one over four pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q2 divided by R12, where this R12 is the dis distance between the point charges, and these are the magnitudes, uh, not the magnitudes, but the values of the charges. Uh, in this case, they are equal, and this is something uh, we know. So the one thing to notice here is that there's no square here. Right? The potential energy goes as one over R, not one over R square. Uh, well, we can just write this down. So this is uh, one over four pi epsilon naught. No surprises there. Q square divided by six fifths R. And at this point, you should probably pull out the value uh, right there, uh, Q square and substitute in here and express this in terms of uh, M and G and so on and so forth. And you can almost guess what the answer is going to be, but the answer is not going to be, but what it's going to look like. Uh, this is going to be something, something times M times G times R. Okay, so if you're finding something else, you're probably making a mistake. So remember, uh, the gravitational potential energy is something like MGH, okay, so that's the dimensions. And the uh, only things that you can play around in this problem is M, G, and R, so with the Q square. Uh, so somehow that combination should yield something times M, G, R. Okay. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to get something that has dimensions of potential energy.